Stats. Constructing a prediction interval using StatCrunch. For this particular problem, I'm going to use Pearson StatCrunch to show you how to create a prediction interval. Normally, there's uh, some lengthy calculations that go along with this, but in the interest of time, we'll go ahead and use technology to determine what the prediction interval is going to be. So the table shows the total square footage in billions of retailing space at shopping centers and their sales in billions of dollars for 10 years. Construct a 90% prediction interval for sales when the total square footage is 5.1 billion. The equation of the regression line is y hat equals 521.780x minus 1716.789. And then we're given the table with total square footage representing our X values and sales representing our Y values. Remember that these sales are in billions of dollars. Okay, so like I said, we're going to use StatCrunch for this. Depending on which online platform you're using for your homework, there might be a little blue square that is just to the right of your table. You can go ahead and left click that and then you can open it in StackCrunch. But for this particular problem, I've already copied the table into StackCrunch. So let me make this a little bit bigger. And you can see that we have our variable total square, and this is going to be square footage. I can go ahead whoops, and change that if I want, and I can also look at sales y here. So what? in order to do this, we'll go to stat, we're going to scroll down to regression, we're going to left click simple linear, and now we're given our input table. For the x variable, we're going to select obviously the x variable. And for the y variable, we'll do the same thing. We are not doing a hypothesis test. Instead, we're doing a confidence interval. We want to do a confidence interval at 0. I mean 0 0.90. We also want to go ahead and do a prediction of y. Now you don't necessarily have to do the confidence interval here, but I'm doing that just to show you the difference between the two. And what we're going to do is we're going to predict what our y value will be based upon our initial x value, which in this particular case is going to be 5.1 billion. Now, when you go to go and put that in, you realize that you can't put 5.1 billion in there as 5 comma 100 comma 00 comma 000, okay? And I may have had too many zeros in there. You're going to put it in as it's stated in the problem 5.1. However, when we actually determine what our prediction interval is, we need to make sure that the answer that we give is in billions. Okay? So now, change this to 0 0.90 because that's what we're calling for in the problem. And then we're ready. We just left click compute. Okay? And now you're given this table in this pop-up window and there's a lot to it okay notice that it's gone ahead and calculated what the linear regression line is and that should match what's given in the problem and in fact it does okay it is written backwards from what is written in the problem but you'll also notice that instead of having just an x it has total square footage comma x because that was the name of the column that we used. It's also going to give you a sample size, which we already know is 10. It gives you your correlation coefficient and your R squared value. Now, I'm going to look down at these different tables. The one I'm really interested in is down here where it says predicted values. 
X value is the value that I plug into the regression line. The predicted value is 944.2892. But what I'm interested in for this particular problem is the 90% prediction interval. And it's going to be with a lower, li lower limit of 871.45701 up to an upper level or an upper limit of 1017.1214 remember those are in billions so I need to go ahead and convert that in order for this to be an accurate prediction interval now I'm using these values and remember as I said they're in billions so we'll go ahead and write 871 Point four five seven zero one. Since it's in billions, we'll look at it and say, okay, there are nine zeros, which means I will move my decimal point to the right nine places. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I will drop in zeros as placeholders here. And now I see that I have this number. which that's going to be my hundreds, that's my thousands, that's my billions, I mean millions, and now I'm up to billions. It's 871,457,010,000. Now remember, that's in dollars. It's billions of dollars, so I will put a dollar sign here. If I don't, then it's going to be incorrect. And it's going to be less than Y is going to be less than, and now I'm going to look at this number. and I'm going to move my decimal point nine places to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And drop in zeros wherever I don't have a number. And I'm going to go ahead and write out the number without all the uh, extraneous formatting. And then I'm going to put in my commas to represent my number. And we'll note that it's going to be in dollars and that's going to be read as 1 trillion 17 billion 121 million 400 thousand dollars and obviously I could put point zero zero but I don't need to in this particular instance and this is your prediction interval What does that mean in the grand scheme of things? It means that you can be 90% confident that the sales will be within the prediction interval when the total square footage is 5.1 billion square feet. 